you said that you want to name the group of Stax Brothers, I thought about this. Because I uh, did a spot on his radio show a few years back. And and I, I had I had gone to New York to do this just before I met you, mm -hmm. like about six months before I met you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a couple years later, when the whole thing of Stax Brothers came up, mm -hmm. my anchor in just that word, remember, I, I don't know if you remember what I told you then, I said, I said, once well, you put that name on your group, <laughs> you are lining yourself up, you're attaching yourself to a train, right? Exactly, we know that too. <laughs> and a tradition of music, so you got to come with it if you call yourself the Stax Brothers, yeah. because this is what has walked before you. This guy, and you talk about survivors and somebody that's been there, hit rock bottom, and come back. It was this guy. And I don't ask a whole lot of people for autographs, but when I was on this radio show, <laughs> and I had a chance to meet him and hang out and, and, and talk and hear his show in New York and all that, I said, man, I said, I said, man you are Isaac Hayes, man. You are like the cat. Because when I, I, I became familiar with him through his, his records, but his songwriting, man, if you I, if you talk about anything about this man and music, man, that's huge. His songwriting, his lyrics, man, unbelievable. Soul man, all that kind of stuff. The stuff he did with Sam and Dave. Mm -hmm. That's what time it is. And then he stepped out and he had his moment and became bigger than us. Right. He was, the, he was the image of Stacks in the seventies. Right. Right. Yeah. What do you remember about the Watt Stacks concert? Because part of my inspiration about doing these shows yeah. is I'm trying to I'm trying to at least line this thing up where this many people can come together peacefully, you know? And yeah. What do you remember from Watt Stacks and the, the Black Woodstock? Well, for one, man, I you know it was it was hard to get uh, when that came out to get you know there's no such thing as video mm -hmm. to get a copy of that. It's still hard to get it. It's just coming and, out. Uh, <laughs> and uh, when it was coming out. Yeah. Uh, it was. I had to sneak into a movie theater to actually go and see it, you know. But uh, I was just blown away by the magnitude of seeing that many artists of that caliber on a single concert. Just, just. I mean, there, there are really no, there are really no precedents for what stacks. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about film and films about music and the black community having a concert that big. Yeah, having a concert that big, because growing up in the South, there were places where we couldn't have that many black people in one place at a concert, you know. So mm -hmm. seeing that on film and seeing that that could exist somewhere was just and young amazing. Richard, young Richard Fryer was involved in that. Right, right. <laughs> and then actually, a guy from my neighborhood had played in uh, in Isaac Hayes' band, you know. Uh, so I just I remember the tunes, and of course Ike, you know, you know, he used to come out there in the gold the gold chain mm -hmm. uh, chain mesh outfits and all that. And, it was it was amazing, man. Yeah, you know, Black Moses there, right? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I, I always loved the I, I always loved the Barcades, man, in their music, you know. Uh, Son of Shaft, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it, it Stax Records, uh, you know, uh, Carla Thomas, Otis Redding, all Steve all Cropper, of that stuff, man. Down, yeah. yeah, all of that stuff was in in in, in my family's collection of forty fives. So to me, Watch Stacks was just more or less like a a, a watershed moment for, for that label yeah. and for Black America. And the Blues Brothers, too, as well. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It was, kind of, it was kind of a nod of that influence. There are so many things that come out of that influence. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's just like, nowadays in my improvisation class, I know we're almost out of, out of the end of it, but to teach people in my class the, the certain chord structure of a dominant nine chord, mm -hmm. I say, okay, play this note. Ah, 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 ah. I said, okay, now, now play it like this. One, two, three, four, one. Ah, 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 ah. Everybody in the class says, oh wow, that's I feel good. Everybody in the class. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if you want to talk about the influence of that music or of that time period, there's so many things about that time period. People call the Motown era, but you know, Stax Records, Chess, chess Records. James Brown's recordings, Aretha Franklin's recordings, all of that to me is 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 a direct outgrowth of Black Black America having some type of central model mm -hmm. to be able to work from. You know, yeah. you know, in some respects, Stax Records doesn't get its due. It does, as far as I'm concerned. Some business and all that. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say one last thing. Uh, I know you're not supposed to tell me where he is, but we're searching for Sly Stone. So just tell tell the camera you're not gonna tell us. I don't know where he is. I know how you can find him, but <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea, man, but I think wherever he is, man, we're talking about 
uh, we're talking about a genius, and you're talking about a guy that a lot of people owe a debt to for what he did for G -funk, music. G-Funk, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Matt, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Yeah.